The land explored by our ancestors extends from Altai to the White Sea. The scientific expedition Trails of Nomads continues to unveil the path of our forefathers. Its leader is a true citizen of the world. He believes, without a deep understanding of the past, there is no future. Each journey is focused on a detailed study of history and culture. Pilgrim of the 21st century, Zapari Skakov, with a team of scientists, has already visited more than 50 countries. Scientists reveal the exciting secrets of the past. Watch an amazing story of a great journey in the Trails of Nomads program. Trails of Nomads scientific expedition is on the highest and coldest continent of the Earth. What is the importance of the Kazakh expedition led by Sapari Skakov to the South Pole? How did the Turkish navigator Piri Rise manage to draw up an accurate map of Antarctica? What is the need to build a research station in this part of the planet? Earth is keeping endless mysteries. From time to time, more versions appear about the once existing civilization on the White Continent. There is an assumption that Atlantis, which is mentioned in the manuscripts of the ancient Greek thinker Plato, is Antarctica. Of course, this opinion is far from the truth. The first map of the White Continent was made by the navigator, admiral of Turkic origin, Piri Reis. An expedition led by the 21st century pilgrim Sapari Skakov to the South Pole is a revival of the feet of the ancestors. On the Polish Barushin, Altnana, Bridgelburn, says Jazla Poinsgirik. It can. To get to the South Pole, you had to sign up one year ahead. Antarctica welcomes tourists only once a month. It's December. At other times, it is simply impossible to travel here since the air temperature drops to 68, 70 degrees. We signed up for a polar expedition in America. In 2007, an invitation came. Our group included three people. The journey to the mystery mainland began at Punta Arenas Airport in southern Chile. For this, the members of the Kazakh expedition first flew to Moscow, then to Paris. Then, passing Santiago, they arrived at the place of departure. Despite the fact that a long distance was overcome, it is not easy to get to Antarctica right away. The expedition led by Sapari Skakov was to take off on December 1st. However, it was impossible to leave at the appointed time. It all depends on the weather conditions. The peculiarity of this climate is white fog. Through it, it is almost impossible to distinguish sky and earth. Moreover, the ground is covered with snow. Everything's white, both the earth and the sky. Visibility is almost zero within two meters. I cannot see anything. Therefore, all the way to our tent, where we rest and eat, is marked with red flags every two meters. These are landmarks, thanks to which you can move. It takes about four and a half hours for the Il-76 aircraft under the control of the Ukrainian crew from Punta Arenas airport to get to the Patriot Hills base camp. It flies over such amazing places as Tierra del Fuego Drake Passage. It is a real pleasure to observe such beauties of the earth from the air. The L-76 aircraft delivered tourists to the base camp of Patriot Hills, which is located at an altitude of 800 meters above sea level. Immediately, without stopping the engine, the aircraft returns back. There is a danger that it will freeze in the harsh climate of Antarctica. But how can a person withstand such a cold? <laughs> Water 
The air temperature was 37 degrees below zero. We were welcomed and accommodated in double tents. More than 50 people arrived. Each expedition has its own program. 12 people were sent to the South Pole. The Patriot Hills, where the expedition members are accommodated, is camp owned by Antarctic Logistics and Expeditions, LLC. It was formed in 1987. In 1989, British traveler Martin Williams led an expedition to the South Pole from here. The trip, which lasted 50 days, made it possible to visit the point of convergence of all the meridians. Since then, it has become a classic trend. The distance between Patriot Hills base camp and the South Pole is 800 kilometers. According to our program, we were supposed to stay at the polar station Patriot Hills for one week. Such a period is necessary for the adaptation of the human body to harsh conditions. We will fly to the South Pole in a week. The flight from Patriot Hills Base Camp to the South Pole takes six hours. There is one stop in the middle. The aircraft is refueled at the station on Thiel Mountains. It is worth noting that Antarctica, which covers an area of 14,107,000 square meters, is not permafrost covered with ice and snow, as many imagine. It is the usual continent familiar to our eyes, part of the Earth. There are mountains and stones here too, but they, of course, have their own characteristics. The lower part of the mountain is covered with snow and ice. It is about one and a half kilometers. Only the tops are visible. For example, Vincent Peak. It was located next to our polar station. The highest point in Antarctica is Vincent Peak. Its height is 4,892 meters, and it was conquered by Kazakhstan climbers. In 2001, Irvand Ilinsky, and in 2011, the Lukyana family ascended it. Climbing Vincent refers to the Seven Summits Climbing Project. In Antarctica, the sun rises only once a year. It shines for six months. After six months, the sun sets, and the next six months is the night. Approaching the South Pole, you can see the Roald Amundsen and Robert Scott South Pole Research Station. These are the individuals who were the first to discover the coldest point of the planet. According to official figures, Roald Amundsen reached the South Pole on December 14, 1911, and Robert Scott on January 17, 1912. Амундсен алдыменен солтүстік полюске бару мақсатында шыққан болатын, ал Роберт Скотт бастапқыда Amundsen planned to visit the North Pole first, and Robert Scott first set out to visit the South Pole. However, Amundsen, on his way to the North Pole, heard the news that American Robert Peary had managed to open the North Pole before him. Then he turned his ship 180 degrees with the words, then I'm going to the South Pole. This act speaks of his courage and determination. Two expeditions went to the White Mainland at the same time. However, each of them had their own tactics. Roald Amundsen went out with the dogs harnessed to the sleigh, and Robert Scott used ponies to move the snowmobiles and horses. This was the main mistake of the English researcher. This man was also very brave because when the snowmobiles went out of order and the horses died, he dragged all his luggage to the pole. A month later, he saw the Norwegian flag and read the note left by Amundsen. In it, he wished the traveler success. However, Scott and his comrades died on the way back from cold and physical exhaustion. The members of the expedition did not reach their warehouse. On the centenary of the conquest of the South Pole by Roald Amundsen in the 20th anniversary of Kazakhstan's independence, that is, in 2011, the Kazakh research expedition visited America by car and for the second time, after Sapari Skakov raised the Kazakh flag there.
This trip was an important historical event. That year, only Kazakhs traveled to the South Pole by cars. The rest got there by air. At the same time, it took 108 hours for Kazakh team to get to the Novolazarevskaya Russian station from the South Pole. Thus, they set a new world record, which was written down in the Guinness Book of Records. This expedition also carried out important scientific research. Snow samples were taken at each latitude, the snow was melted down to one liter of water, and an analysis was made at the Institute of Nuclear Physics. I was surprised that the composition of the snow that lay from Novolazarevska station to the pole contained 47 chemical elements. Therefore, I must say that the continent, which was considered the cleanest, is also gradually becoming polluted. Air pollution contributes to annual warming. It causes an intensified melting of the glaciers of Antarctica. Several years ago, scientists around the world said that since 1992, about 3 trillion tons of snow has melted, with three-fifths of that accounted for the past five years. The rise in the world's oceans level is a great danger for all mankind. <laughs> At the South Pole, you may not immediately notice how much smaller the ice layer has become, but on the coast of Antarctica you can see how the ice breaks off from the main continent and goes into the sea. This is direct evidence of the global warming and increased glacier melting. The 47 chemical elements found in the snow indicate not only atmospheric pollution, but also the possible presence of natural resources on the White Continent. According to researchers, Antarctica is part of the once existing continent of Gondwana, which was connected to Africa. And in modern Southern Africa, there are now a lot of minerals such as uranium and diamonds. <laughs> There was once a dense forest in Antarctica. This implies the existence of fossils, coal, oil, gas and other ore. When we left it, we saw excavated pits, holes for exploration of fossils. But they are all already closed. However, I am afraid that after 2041, that is, after the Antarctic Treaty expires, the development of all these riches will begin. Antarctica is still common for all mankind. The United Nations has announced that this continent cannot be owned by anyone. However, interest in it is growing more and more due to the presence of the alleged rich resources. Moreover, even the ice itself is of great value. This is a source of fresh water. Antarctica contains 80% of the Earth's fresh water resources. And no one can guarantee that in the event of a shortage of fresh water, Antarctica will not become a subject of contention. The largest of all polar stations is the Amundsen Scott U.S. Research Station. We saw with our own eyes the technical equipment. It is at the very high level. South Pole has the cleanest air. Therefore, this is most favorable place for researching the solar system and various planets. Thus, each country has its own plans according to which research work is carried out. According to the 1961 Antarctic Treaty, any country can open its own research station on this continent. Today, more than 90 such stations operate here. About 40 of them are considered seasonal. The first station was opened in 1940 by Great Britain. After that, the stations of such countries as Chile, the Soviet Union, France and the US opened. The Soviet Union built its first station in 1956. Argentina now has the largest number of stations. Antarctica case mishart degen sonda case mishart pen 12 yel at first, 12 countries joined the Antarctic Treaty, then seven more countries joined. In total, there are 19 parties. However, there are no obstacles for other countries, and we, for example, like Ukraine, could become parties to the treaty. The 
The question may arise, what is the benefit of opening a station on Antarctica? This is necessary above all for the future. The fact that the ancestors once put this continent on the map testifies to their foresight. Мне, менің қолымда Турцияның ақшасы 10 миллион. Мұнда I hold the Turkish 10 millionth build depicting map of Antarctica and South America. They were composed by Admiral Ahmed Muhyiddin Piri. Оны жасаған Ахмед Мухиддин Пири деген Адмирал. In 1929, in the Topkapi Palace, located in Istanbul, a roe deer hide was found, on which a map drawn up in 1513 was applied. Its author is the famous Turkish navigator Piri Reis. He plotted the exact contours of Africa, America, Antarctica and the South Pole on his map. Has he visited Antarctica? <laughs> If you look at the maps of the 15th, 16th centuries, the current area of Antarctica is, its outlines are exactly the same. This, of course, is a mystery, as maps made with ultra-precise instruments and medieval maps are practically no different. All of this requires careful study. The Piri Reis map makes people of today's technogenic time think, how was it done? And until now, there was probably an opportunity to fly in the sky and even into space, because such high precision mapping requires images from space. Scientists think so. Columbus discovered America, but he had a map in his hands, or rather, a book with maps. He used it, and he knew exactly where he was going. Ahmed Mohidin had the same map. These maps were made by our ancestors. Famous traveler Saparis Kakov revived the spirit of the ancestors. He reached the South Pole and raised the flag of independent Kazakhstan there. This is a historic event that raises the country's authority. Our team consisted of 12 people from seven countries, but no one took a flag with them, only we had one. We first raised our Kazakh flag at the South Pole. There were already 12 flags there, our Kazakhstan's flag became the 13th. A day later we handed it over to a special archive, there is an entry in the journal and everyone can see it there. Saparis Kakov is a patriot of his people, who revives the heritage of ancestors, raised the flag of independent Kazakhstan both at the South and North Poles. Thus, he showed the desire of our people for knowledge and discoveries. <laughs> What does the expedition Trails of Nomads give us? First, it promotes Kazakhstan. For example, Indians or Americans are surprised when you say that you are Kazakh from Kazakhstan. At 21st century pilgrim traveled to the South and North Poles. He opened the way for our other compatriots who would like to go this way. After the expedition of Saparis Kakov in 2007 and 8, Kazakhstan citizens began to actively visit these parts of the earth. If we say that our ancestors were involved in the discovery of the North and South Poles, this greatly influences the awakening of patriotic feelings among young people. Therefore, I want to tell the younger generation that we must study and comprehend science and use all knowledge for the good of our country. The virus, which has become a real trap for all mankind, has become an obstacle for the work of the Trails of Nomads expedition, more precisely, for international missions of scientists. Research will continue after the end of pandemic. Indeed, the disclosure and study of the blank spots of national history is a sacred duty for traveler Saparis Kakov. This is a good example for the descendants of glorious ancestors.